Taron Thomas used up all his AFL lives with North Melbourne after another set of allegations of inappropriate behaviour towards women came to the public's attention in January this year, the AFL gave him a massive 18 game suspension. This, along with a history of poor behaviour with women and other offences such as driving while his licence was suspended, led to the Kangaroos standing him down immediately. They ultimately tried to support the star player, but his off-field issues couldn't be resolved. But like anyone who has the amount of football talent Thomas has, recent information is heavily linking the Geelong Football Club with him. Chris Scott himself said the interest doesn't mean the Cats are invested yet, but they are clearly keeping an eye on him. The policy to be open-minded. We believe in second chances. That doesn't mean that you, know, you can just roll in and do whatever you want. But yeah, I think um, in principle the idea of... Um, not getting to know too quickly is a good one. But I think the most important thing is that, yeah, we, we are open-minded. Now, that's a long, long way from yes, but it's a start. Geelong believe they are a club with a fantastic culture, and it's why they are an attractive prospect as a team to join. Maybe other AFL clubs will also look at Thomas. There is clear upside with a player like Thomas, but history shows it can be a reach. Some players with off-field concerns can turn it around and perform and train well, but others just can't. This can also lead to problems inside the locker room and raise questions over club culture. In the 2008 pre-season draft, the last player selected was Ben Cousins. At the time, it was well documented his issues with substance abuse, but it seemed with regular testing, he was back on track. The Saints and Pies had a look but to most people's surprise, Richmond took the gamble. They were ninth in 2008 and looking to sneak in the finals the following year. Not only would Cousins make them look better on paper, but because of his name, the excitement and publicity would be huge. However, nothing really came of it. They lost round one by 83 points and Cousins did his hamstring. He played 15 games and had 30 possessions or more three times. The Tigers finished second bottom with just five wins. Cousins backed up with 17 games in 2010, averaging a tick over 22 touches a game. Richmond for the year won one more game, but still sat second bottom. The idea of Cousins' return was box office, but the reality fell flat. A similar type of player to Thomas was Gold Coast Harley Bennell. The second pick in the 2010 draft looked to be a star. In 2012, just his second season in the AFL, he averaged 23.7 disposals per game and kicked 25 goals for the year. His form was solid in the next few years, but like Thomas, small incidents began showing signs of trouble. He was dropped in 2015 for drinking alcohol despite the club banning it for the week. Then, only a few months later, Images were leaked from 2013 showing Bennell preparing to snort a white powder. In September the same year, another drunken altercation led to the son shopping him around. Freeman who answered the call and Bennell was at the club for four years. However, he on average played a game every two years, finishing with two matches played, all in 2017, kicking just three goals for the club. Soft tissue injuries cursed him at the Dockers, and with such little top-level football played, surely his career was over. But no, one last lifeline in the Melbourne Demons came about. He played three games in 2020 before a COVID breach during the hubs cost Melbourne $50,000, and he got a four-game ban as well. He retired immediately. As talented as he was on the field, Brennan Favola was just as much trouble off it. Throughout his career at Carlton, so many stupid decisions followed him. Whether it was getting in trouble at clubs or bars in the mid-2000s, to that infamous drunken Brownlow night, it was one incident after another. In 2009, after kicking 89 total goals, leading the league, and at just 28, he was out of the blues. It wasn't one event in particular, that saw him get traded to the Brisbane Lions, but an accumulation of them. Brisbane, similar to the way Richmond looked at Cousins, 
simply couldn't resist pairing up for Vola and Jonathan Brown. On paper, it looked unreal. For Vola's 48 goals in 17 games was a solid return, but didn't lead the Lions up the ladder. And Brown's total of 85 goals fell to 53 in 2010, and Brisbane won just seven games, finishing 13th on the ladder. The switch up north didn't help his behavior as a raft of allegations came out against him and then it was later revealed gambling had taken over his life. In February 2011, the Brisbane Lions sacked Favola after just one completed season and he finished playing in the AFL at just 30 years of age. Now those are some examples of when taking a chance goes wrong, but some gambles do pay off and people can change. Geelong themselves have experienced this with Tyson Stengel. After getting picked up by Richmond in 2017, playing two games, and then getting traded to Adelaide in 2019, it seemed more opportunity would be ahead for Stengel. However, in his two seasons at the Crows, the small forward played 14 games, kicking 13 goals, never really establishing himself. Then off the field, he was caught with an illicit substance and the Adelaide CBD with Brad Crouch and had his contract terminated. But credit to him, as in 2021, he went back to the Sandful and played a critical role in Woodville's Premiership that season. With Eddie Betts at Geelong acting as a big brother mentor, the Cats picked him up as a delisted free agent. In hindsight, it's been one of the best bargain pickups we've seen. Out of nowhere in 2022, Stengel was All-Australian, kicking 53 total goals and being a member of the 2022 Premiership side. Now I know there is an ongoing legal case with Marlon Pickett, but he hasn't been found guilty of anything at this stage. Up to this point, he has had a remarkable life switch up. From spending time in jail and doing drugs, Pickett has slowly adjusted. He played six and a half years in the waffle for South Fremantle, and his talent and on-field maturity fit the Richmond Football Club. They may have got the Cousins call wrong, but Pickett has been great. The mid-season pickup famously debuted in the 2019 Grand Final, playing a starring role, and since then has been a great role player mainly on a wing. He's played 83 games as of making this, and got another Premiership medal in 2020. Hopefully, he can stay on the path he was on. Right now, if Thomas can try to improve his life and show some progress, there is no reason a club won't pick him up. You may not think it is right for the things he's done in the past, but when he serves his 18-game ban, then to the AFL, he has paid his debt. Geelong right now are front runners, and they make sense as a club to go to. Great culture, coaches and players, who have a history of turning around players' habits, helping their lives off the field, and then reaping the rewards on the field. Taron Thomas is just 24 years old, and it would be a real shame if he lets his career go, especially with the amount of talent that he has. Clubs, friends, and family can help, but it's up to him at the end of the day.